Hello, welcome to our Daily Bible as we continue our journey in 2 Peter. Today we're going to read 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 to 21 and as we begin let me pray for us. Heavenly Father as we gather this morning to read your word and hear your word we pray that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher and our guide today. We ask that he might come to the glory of Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to read our passage, which is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things, for prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Here ends our reading. As we continue in Peter's letter, letter uh, the letter of someone who is concerned that they're not far from the end of their days, he wants to get the message over to everybody. Uh, and here in this first chapter, he is giving he's giving the reasons why we can believe and trust in Christ. He's already said in the previous verses, as you heard yesterday, that he was an eyewitness. He saw the resurrection of Jesus, that pivotal moment in human history. He was a witness to what happened. And here he talks not just about being an eyewitness, but today's passage, he talks about the, the importance of scripture, about how the Bible pointed to the coming of Christ, how scripture uh, is the fundamental text on which we base our faith. He says we have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And here when he's talking about the prophetic message, he's talking about the prophetic message of scripture, about the coming of Christ, uh, and, and how so many texts in the Old Testament point to the coming of a Messiah, to the coming of Jesus. And he says, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place. Peter is aware, as we are today, that for all the good things in life, the world is a dark place. Evil things happen, evil things go on, things that should not happen. And yet we find in Christ a light shining in the dark place. And this prophetic message, which points to Jesus, shines that light. We have a cupboard under our stairs, which is um, pitch black. It's got no windows and uh, no outside lights. And the only way to see anything in there is to turn the light on. Otherwise, you're in complete darkness. Peter is saying here that Jesus the product of that prophetic message is the light shining in the dark place. <clears throat> and that word um, is a light shining until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. He's saying that the prophetic message is what points us to that re living relationship with Christ. So we start with the prophetic message, someone telling us about Christ, someone reading the scriptures or ourselves reading scripture. And as we find uh, the truth in the scriptures, as we encounter Christ there, we then find that Jesus himself rises in our hearts <clears throat> from being someone who is um, in a book that others have experienced. We experience Christ ourselves. A light shining in a dark place is how it starts. So the light of Jesus shines through his word into our hearts and lives. But then the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Here Peter is, is using a passage from Numbers 24, which talks about a coming king uh, who is like a, a star, a, a morning star rising. And here, uh, and also this, this verse, this idea of the morning star is repeated in the book of Revelation as well. And we see that the morning star is Jesus and he rises in our hearts. He comes alive to us. We begin to have a personal relationship with him. So our relationship starts with the prophetic message, but it becomes a personal one. And that's what this verse helps us to see, that that which started with scripture continues 
in the personal encounter with Christ, who lives in us. And then Peter goes on to affirm to us the authenticity of Scripture. He says, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came out of the prophet's own interpretation. In other words, it's not simply someone having a good idea or someone feeling that this is a good thing. No, he goes on. The prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit collaborates with the human authors to produce the prophetic word, Scripture. This is really important for us because here Peter is echoing the teacher, uh, the teach, teaching of 2 Timothy. If you remember 2 Timothy 3.16, where Paul says that all Scripture is inspired by God, is God breathed. And here this echoes it. Uh, and, and Peter is teaching us the same truth, that the prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In other words, those who wrote scripture were inspired by the Spirit of God. So this testimony that we have in this book is inspired by the Holy Spirit. But that, that testimony that's in this book is, is vital, but only vital insofar as it causes Christ to rise in our hearts. There are so many who have this book just sitting on their shelves that they never read. And it's only as they read it, as they let the light shine in their, dark, in their darkness, does the Holy Spirit enable that light to rise in their hearts for that morning star to rise as the day dawns, the day of salvation, when they come to Christ. Let me pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word, for your holy scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit. Thank you that they are life to us. They bring light into our darkness and that they enable us to encounter our Lord Jesus Christ, to know him, to love him, to be part of his family. Thank you, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, that as we read your word, it is the Holy Spirit the writer, the author of these words that enables us to understand what is meant. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gift. Amen.